So in this video, we're going to replace a blower motor and an air handling unit. So the way you uh, discover that your motor is going bad or is bad in this case is you have your wife wake you up at 1 o'clock in the morning telling you that she smells something burning. Of course, you can't smell it, but the smoke alarm isn't going off, so you're not in too much of a panic and you start to investigate into what the heck is she talking about. So you eventually find your way down into the basement and uh, you notice that uh, it's, it's making a lot of noise, you know, it's kind of, well this is insulated but still all the noise is transmitted through the metal, it's making a lot of racket and you get your little heat gun and you shoot it at the motor and you see like it's 160 degrees but you don't know if that's good or not because you didn't check it when it was running okay but it's really hot to the touch so you replace the uh, start capacitor I happen to have an extra one I always keep an extra one that's for the outside unit and that didn't work so you tell I took this all apart cleaned it up put it in started it up and it ran great. It was super quiet. It ran great first cycle. Everything was wonderful. I thought I dodged a bullet. Uh, then the second cycle, it made the noise again. I knew it wasn't running right. It's when I checked the temperature and saw it was going up. Uh, it was just not good. I, I knew it was on its last legs. And then the third cycle, it just kept going slower and slower and slower and then it just finally froze up. So now we have this big old rat's nest of wires, you know, what the heck is going on, you know, you got wires running everywhere, you don't know what the heck they are, what they're for, what they're doing. So anyway, so you kind of go to the motor and you can definitely see that the two brown wires from the motor go to your start capacitor, so that's real easy. And you can always take a digital picture of it uh, before you take it apart so that you can put it back together correctly. Well, you have your schematic here. It tells you you have a yellow, a black, blue, and red wire coming out. And your two brown wires go to your capacitor. One's a common, one's capacitor. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so, anyway, so that's your wiring. So it's a three speed, red is low, blue is medium, black is high, uh, but it turns out that my unit only is wired up for one speed. So in my case, and yours might be different, you can see that the black and the red are capped off. I don't use them. The blue wire goes to the fan speed trap, and how do I know that? Because it says so on the schematic. Then your schematic also tells you that the yellow wire goes to the TRAN, T-R-A-N, and you look on the legend and that tells you it's the transformer. So uh, it actually goes to the common connection of the transformer in this case. So you can take a picture of that too to make sure you put it in the right location. And finally the ground wire goes there underneath the capacitor uh, mounting bracket. So I have all my terminals disconnected and now I'm going to have to uh, pull the motor. It's usually in a box like this. It's, uh, the motor is mounted to the box and then the squirrel cage or the fan blades are mounted to the motor. So it's just a matter of, you know, looking at, seeing where all the screws are, figuring it out, taking the screws out. Alright, so here we are in my case. It's all ready to come out. Nothing to it. Just take it out. All right, since you have it all apart, you might as well clean it up. Okay, for disassembly, you're going to need to take the uh, alignment slash stop nut off of the squirrel cage. This locks down the squirrel cage to the motor shaft. It also has a flat spot on it, so it'll index it, so it'll give it some place to bite on there. Um, you're going to need, like, a open-end wrench. If you want to use a socket, it's going to have to be a 12-point socket. That's uh, a hex will not fit on a square nut here, so you can use your 12-point socket if you want to. 
Um, I only have room for a quarter inch. Maybe you can get a 3 8 inch drive in there. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. All right. Next, we get the motor out of here. So let me just take these uh, shock absorbing mountings off of here. use my electric wrench but I'm not. You can see it has uh, these are torque limiters that means that no matter how hard you tighten this bolt down it's gonna go metal to metal and it'll only become so tight you can't really squish these things so that's that's why that metal sleeve is there. Alright the motor should be free to just come right out and it does. Alright and then there's like four screws Yes, I went to the tool. So when I took the other screw out, it just kind of sprung open. Now I have access to the squirrel cage here. Um, and it's pretty dirty. So I have a bucket with the solution in there, and I'm just going to let this thing soak. Hopefully I have enough. Ooh, look at that. Nice fit. And nice splash. So it doesn't go down all the way, so I'm going to have to deal with that. I'm going to have to rotate it, I guess. Next, I'm going to have to take this uh, motor mount off here. And, <laughs> wow, that's a locking nut. Can you see that? It has like a little dent in it right there. That means it's a locking nut. So, anyway. So, I'll just take this apart and reuse it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to have to note this for reassembly. There's a little groove that this sits in so the location of the band and the mount need to be such that uh, they can fit in the squirrel cage. Now it doesn't have to be exactly the way it was because I have quite a bit of room on the shaft you know two inches almost three inches of play where that screw can mount onto the shaft and actually the new one I'm getting is even longer so you know you can put your band in the middle of the motor and then put your mount uh, on there accordingly so for your blower motor you just go on to Amazon and you say blower motor and buy with one click and there it is at your door right well I don't think so they are there are so many different ones it's unbelievable so what are the important things you're going to need to know? Well, this one's one half horsepower. But what makes it really weird is it's uh, 1,075 RPM and it's a three speed. But remember my, uh, let's see, black and red wires were not connected. I'm only using one speed. It turns out to be the middle speed, the blue wire. So I don't need three speeds. And it's really not turning that RPM. However, that's not important. <laughs> You're gonna, it's going to say 1,075 RPM because that's really the high speed. And then uh, it says your amps are 2.9. But there again, that's really weird because the motor you buy is probably going to be a different amperage. Because um, it turns out that 2.9 is really the low speed amperage for this motor. I don't know, it's weird. Uh, I don't know why that was. It was extremely confusing. So to order a replacement motor, they're all pretty much the same diameter, so you're gonna get like five and a quarter inches or whatever it is. It's five. I can't remember. I'm making a video and I didn't do my homework first, but they're all the same size as far as like five and a quarter inches or whatever they are, so you'll see that. Uh, horsepower, you want to make sure that at least it lists horsepower for the one of the three speeds and your voltage uh, range is going to also be very important. There's at least four listings of voltages. Alright, I'm going to put my squirrel cage back in the uh, unit here and in case you forget how it goes, uh, their screws for the motor mounts probably be on one side and then there's also the holes and slot for the uh, capacitor, the start capacitor. That'll tell you 
the wires are coming out of the motor on this side. Then the shaft will always go in the indented side and the locking side will go on the outside. So this guy will go in here like this. And it's ready to accept the motor. So I'll just put the access panel back together and we'll wait on the motor. Alright, video's getting long so I need to cut out some stuff. Uh, here's the new motor and uh, the there's some additional wiring compared to the original and I have a white wire instead of a yellow wire. I need to make sure that the yellow and the white wire are the same and I'll do that by reviewing the schematic. Alright, I'll get reassembling. And problem solved. A uh, quick post-mortem looks like the rotor's damaged. So could have been the uh, bushing on this side wore out and caused it to wobble or tilt or collide in with the coil or something because this side seems to be okay. So something's going on. Don't really care.